college, what once was an exclusive privilege for less than 10% of the populations, is now a common commodity that more than 25% of the U.S. population has. At the same time, the cost of college has gone from $800 per year in the 1970s to more than $16,000 per year today. The average college student graduates with around $30,000 in student loan debt and they make around $55,000 in starting salary, which sounds promising, but don't get misled by the averages. It's fake, don't worry, it's fake. I don't have this much money. In fact, it actually makes me so angry that at age 18, so many people had to make one of their first and most expensive financial decisions on whether they want to take on college debt and go to college. And that's why in this video, we're gonna go over why going to college might no longer be worth it for a lot of people, including you. Typically, when people say college, they associate that with education. College is no longer the single place where knowledge is transferred. Since you can learn everything on the internet, in books, on TikTok and YouTube videos. In fact, a lot of people might say, by the time you can learn it in college in a systematic way, it's already kind of too late to learn about that subject. But if education is no longer the sole purpose of going to college, then why are people still paying tens of thousands of dollars? Well, the hope of getting a high paying job. And like we talked about before, a lot of people go to college and graduate with around $30,000 in student loan debt. And the starting salary they get out of college is around $55,000, which might sound like a very good payback period, but keep in mind that is the average. And averages can be misleading with some people making nothing at all and some people are making pretty high amount in some very high paying job. So is going to debt to go to college still a viable path to the new generation? The answer really depends. The number one thing you need to consider total costs, out-of-pocket costs for you because there are financial aid and scholarship, whether it's need-based or merit-based and depends on the type of college you go to, you might receive different types of grant. So the only thing that you need to consider in terms of financial costs is the total out-of-pocket cost to you when you're attending college. All right, it's too bright right here. I just realized, so I'm gonna try to move to somewhere that's uh, a little bit better. All right. All right. And here's a quick summary on the types of universities out there. There are two main types of university. One is public university, and another one is private university. Then within private universities, there are two types of private university. One is not for profit, another one is for profit. For profit universities, their intents and purposes, other than to educate, is to make a profit for its investor. While the not for profit private university, their goal has to remain to educate and provide an education. So the excess money they make off the students need to be reinvested whether into campus re-improvement or increasing faculty salaries or hiring more teachers and professors and researchers for the benefits of educating its students. Typically when ranking these universities, the public universities have the lowest cost of attendance. Then above it is the for-profit private university, which is surprising. And then finally, it's gonna be the not-for-profit private university. But even though on paper, that is the ranking of the cost of attendance, if you consider the total out-of-pocket cost, the ranking actually becomes public universities, non-profit private universities, then for-profit universities. The reason the non-profit university costs less than the for-profit private university is that the students actually receive a lot of financial aid. In fact, here's a statistic for you. 66% of the students at non-profit universities pay less than $20,000 per year. While at for-profit private universities, only 31% of them pay less than $20,000 a year. Now, the second thing to consider when you're applying for colleges or deciding whether or not to go to college is what major you're gonna study in and how likely you're gonna get a job after you graduate and how much the job is gonna pay you. We're gonna look at college as an investment. STEM degree typically get paid a lot more and have a higher likelihood of getting an employment after college. 
while areas like liberal arts might have a more difficult time finding an employment. And please remember that there are other benefits of going to college. That's where you go to discover yourself when you don't know what you want to do when you grow up. It's where you go to make the connection of your lifetime. Some people meet the love of their life and the alum association, the feeling of belonging in a particular group, a tribe, that might add intangible value to you in your future career. All of those things cannot be generalized, but it's definitely part of the package that you pay tens of thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars. So what are some of the other alternatives of going to college if you eventually decide that going to college is not right for you. You can do things like take a gap year. In order to rediscover yourself or discover yourself to learn about what you want to do in the future, why not take a year off from schooling where you don't have heavy commitments, go whether it's travel the world, take on a job, just ways to find out who you are as a person and what you want in the future. And that brings to second alternative, Go find a job. College is expensive, but if the total out-of-pocket cost for you is lower and where you don't have to take on student loans, it might eventually become a worthy investment. A third alternative is to start a business or pick up an internship to learn from some of the best people in your area. Ask them for mentorships. Learn how to start a business because these are skills that school just cannot teach you. You can learn all the how to start a business, e-commerce, become a real estate agent, all those things from YouTube. Now, I'm not saying you're gonna become rich because it's unlikely that you'll become one of the best real estate agent or one of the e-commerce uh, business startups out there. But if you learn from your mistakes that you're making at age 18, age 19, those will add dividends and benefits and values for the rest of your career. And finally, if you can afford it, traveling is a great option. There are just so much more out there outside the US, like how other people live, how different culture thinks about money, think about happiness because eventually at the end of the day we, we're trying to learn about the world around us and the world is so much bigger than just what's in the United States. All right hope you enjoyed it. Bye!